Hello and welcome to Home Bible Study. From my home to your home, this is Robert Holler thanking you once again for taking the time to observe this video. And a big thank you to those that subscribe and respond. Today's study, ah, the craftiness of Satan. Now I've done previous studies called Spiritual Warfare versus Christianity and some of the doctrines that Christianity believes in. <coughs> Excuse me, now it's time to turn the tables on old Satan. Because I have taught in previous studies the doctrine of long grace, the triune Godhead, baptism, faith, religion, prayer, and sacraments, and also on the debating of Christians to the Word of God. And it all had to do with the religion of Christianity. Well, this video has everything to do with Satan and his crescendoing device. He has thousands of devices out there. And I think the one, if you numbered them, the very first one you'd have to say at the top of the list is his ability to lie. Because that's what caused the fall of mankind in the first place back in Genesis chapter 3. But it's his subtleness, it's his craftiness that we're going to look at today because of how, how Satan works. Now, I, I wrote a whole bunch of stuff down because I had so much I wanted to talk about. And we're going to look at something that works for Satan today as much as it did in the past. And this is all going to be from historical, scriptural uh, references and also what's happening in today's world. Satan has, in the past, been very clever. He, ever since the fall of mankind, when they obtained the knowledge of good and evil, Satan, the sin, entered into the world and death by sin. And we've understood that, and that's in Romans chapter 5, verse 12. By one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and death passed on all, to all men, for that all have sinned. And we understand that. Now, with that being said, over the course of the history of mankind, Satan has always worked against God to thwart his plan of salvation for mankind, predominantly with the uh, nation of Israel, because the nation of Israel was God's chosen people. And Satan didn't have any problem with the Gentile world at that time, because he didn't have to go after them. They were without God anyway. So it wasn't a worry of his. He was going after those that supposedly followed God. And he had quite an influence because he would cause the nation of Israel to go up and down with obedience to the disobedience of God in a roller coaster. And he used prophecy because he knew about prophecy. So that was an advantage Satan thought he had. He thought he was smarter than God. So he knew future events of prophecy up to a point, up to the coming Messiah, for sure. And then uh, he got into the Jews' mind. He got into the Jews' religion. You see, there never was a religion by God's term when we covered the uh, doctrine of religion in Christianity. There never was. But Satan used his influence to have mankind create a religion. And then he was clever enough to make it into a physical entity. And the people of Israel, especially the religious rulers, the hierarchy, the leaders of the Jewish people, went along with it, thinking it was their own influence from the divine God message that they were receiving when they would read Scripture and try to reason or debate Scripture or find out what it really means. Well, Satan stepped in, and he made it into a physical entity. And it became very much a physical religion, <clears throat> which God never intended it to be. And then Jesus Christ came on the scene. And Satan was so clever and subtle with the Jewish leaders, that stuff, Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees of his time, that he influenced them. He influenced them so much that he not only made it into a physical religion, 
but he had blinded the minds of those religious leaders. And I'm bringing that up because it's going to tie in with the rest of it in the later part of the study. He had them so convinced that Jesus Christ was not who he said he was. No matter how many miracle signs and wonders that Jesus Christ gave them, the religious leaders never bought into it, including the chief priest, Caiaphas, and all of the members of the Sanhedrin, the governing body of religious orders of the Jews' religion, and all the leaders wanted nothing to do with it. So much so that it ended up costing Jesus Christ his life. And Satan's big plan was he was going to succeed. If he gets Jesus Christ crucified on the cross, he thought he would have victory over God because he knew something that the religious leaders didn't know. He knew Jesus Christ was the Son of God. He knew Jesus Christ was their Savior. He knew Jesus Christ was their King and going to be their king if he succeeded in his earthly ministry. So the Satan went along and thwarted the minds, blinded the minds. He didn't blind their eyes. He blinded their minds to believe not in anything that Jesus preached. And he thought it worked to a T, and God let him think that way because God's smarter than Satan. We know that, and God had a plan. Now, when Jesus Christ died on the cross... The first part of that, I'm sure Satan was just rejoicing until Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Now, at that very moment, when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, defeated Satan. But Satan didn't realize what he was defeated of. He thought he was defeated because Jesus Christ is alive to be their king of Israel for eternity. That's all Satan knew. Because Satan didn't know anything else about Jesus Christ other than when he was risen from the dead, that proved he was who he said he was. And that defeated Satan from the Jews' religion that he tried to use against them by blinding the minds of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, and the people of Israel. And it worked very, very well through the religion of the Jews. And then he finds something else out. Because after the resurrection of Jesus Christ in a little while, something called, came in called the revelation of the mystery. See, before the revelation of the mystery came in, the 12 apostles were still trying to carry on the gospel of the grace of the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, earthly ministry, under the law. Because he never told them, Jesus Christ never told his 12 apostles to teach anything else other than the things that were under the law, which was the gospel of the kingdom. Everything contained in the doctrine for the gospel of the kingdom they were teaching. And then Satan saw something. He saw the great plan wasn't working. But he was unaware of something else. He was unaware of something called the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ. You see, because the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, which contains the body of Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ in the dispensation of the grace of God, was hidden from him. Because the Bible says the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ was hidden from the foundations of the world. The gospel of the kingdom was never hidden from the foundation of the world. That was created since the foundation of the world, the gospel of the kingdom message, the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the revelation of the mystery was created in the constant mind of God before the foundation of the world in eternity past. So the body of Christ was in times past, eternity past, already eternal. The gospel of the kingdom was not and is not yet today. The gospel of the kingdom under the law that Jesus Christ's earthly ministry, which will be picked up again in his second coming, will eventually become eternal in the end times when he ushers in eternity, but not before that. But the body of Christ is already eternal. And the reason it's eternal, it was made before the foundations of the world, and it was hid from man. So if it was hid from man, it was also hid from Satan. It wasn't exposed in prophecy. 
He knew nothing about it. It was never exposed to the 12 apostles, and that's the reason why it wasn't. Nobody could leak out this mystery until Jesus Christ was ready to reveal it. And he revealed it to Paul after the cross, after he was back in heaven, sitting at the right hand of God the Father on the throne of heaven in charge of all things. And then Paul comes along preaching something totally different. He preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ, forgiveness of the sins of Jesus Christ to all mankind when Jesus Christ took on the sins of the world. That was something new. So was their spirits will be made alive in Christ Jesus because Jesus Christ's role is the same. And all the people that are given grace don't have to participate in anything the law or the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ ever taught or had nothing to do with the Jewish religion whatsoever. It was a whole new entity. It was by grace through faith, nothing else. That's too easy. Satan didn't know anything about that. Because it's, it's said in the book of Corinthians, you can read about it, where if the princes of this world knew about this revelation of the mystery, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. But they didn't know, and Satan didn't know. Because you talk about being defeated. The body of Christ doctrine, the body of Christ itself is a sinless entity. Because it was created by Jesus Christ in eternity past, never touched by Satan or sin in the world. And now it's completed the cross. We that are in the body of Christ through the saving grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ in the dispensation for the grace of God. From Romans to Philemon, that is the doctrine for the body of Christ taught by Paul, we too are sinless because we have forgiven our sins totally by God, never to be held up against us again, never to die again. The one death we were supposed to die at the cross we aren't going to die. Jesus Christ died in our place. So we are never to die again. I'm not talking physically, I'm talking spiritually, ladies and gentlemen. We will never experience the second death. Because you and I never experienced the death of the spirit when we were born physically. That was already dead. Those people that are born with a dead spirit and end up dying a natural death will experience that spiritual death once again that they missed out on. And that's a horrific one. Why am I saying it this way? Why am I presenting it this way? Because of the craftiness of Satan. Let's bring it into today's realm. Now, Satan had nothing left. What am I going to do, he said, that I can confuse these people? What can I do? How can I come at them? I can't come at them to destroy the body of Christ because that's already done. I can no influence on the body of Christ. None. I can't touch it. But I remember in times past when I was on this earth dealing with the nation of Israel, trying to thwart them out of the plan God had for salvation, I found something that worked very well. I had the prophecy, but I don't have the prophecy for the body of Christ, so I can't use that. But I had something else, and it worked very well. I went after the religion of the Jews. I went after man. I blinded the minds of those religious leaders to influence the religion to make it a man-made religion. And it almost worked. Now, the only thing, what can I do on this side of the cross to get mankind to follow me? I can't do anything for the body of Christ again. Those people that are members of the body of Christ, I can't touch because it's a finished work. And it was finished before I had a chance to contaminate it. There's something I should be able to do. Oh, yes. I remember now the subtleness and the craftiness I used with the Jews' religion. I can use it again. But this time, I'm even going to be more crafty. I'm going to be so subtle no man, without the knowledge of the truth now, of the word of God, that is saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ, under the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the doctrine for the body of Christ, in the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in now, will know about it and be able to see it, but nobody else will. And there's a very small number of people that are saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
by faith and faith alone, according to the gift of God called grace. So I got a chance here. So let's do it by religion again. Religion worked the first time. I got defeated at the cross, but I think this time I can draw as many people as I can to go with me to avoid salvation by grace through faith in the body of Christ doctrine. Bring them in something else that'll give them a false hope, a false salvation, and they'll end up where I'm going to end up. How can I do that? Let me influence man. Let me blind the minds of mankind once again. Let's bring in something in the form of a religion again that is so worldwidely accepted by the world, by billions and billions and billions of people. It's going to be a great success. And mankind has already named it, so I'm not going to have any trouble sliding in there. And we're going to call this religion Christianity. Look what I did to the Jews' religion and the religious leaders of the Jewish nation. I should be able to do the same thing with the religion of Christianity and the leaders of Christianity. There are certain things I need to do. And if you think that I'm telling you something that isn't biblical, that uh, Satan didn't blind the minds of those in times past where he is doing it today, well, if you look in uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, this is what it says. Own your Bibles to 2 Corinthians, right after 1 Corinthians. Go to chapter 3, excuse me, chapter 4, let's read verses 3 and 4. Verse 3 says, But if our gospel be hid, that's the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery now of the body of Christ doctrine, the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in today. That's Romans through Philemon that Paul was given by revelation of Jesus Christ to give to you and me today to save us. That's the gospel he's talking about. He's not talking about the gospel of the kingdom. He's talking about the gospel of the grace of God. He said, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Verse 4, in whom the God, small g, Satan, of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Why is that important? Why do you think that's working today? Well, what is, first of all, the body of Christ is a spiritual entity. Satan knows that. He knows there's nothing physical about it, but he has to use something in his cleverness to bring it about. But did you notice today, Satan's not going to go blind your eyes to it because that's physical. He can't touch you, but he can touch something else. He can touch your mind. He can blind your mind to believing not the gospel. And that fits right in with what Paul wrote in Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 and 2 Corinthians. We walk by faith, not by sight. Satan knows that. Well, if, we, if he knows that, he's not going to blind your physical eyes. He's going to blind your mind. You know, it's interesting because just for a little tidbit, Jesus Christ, when he was on his earthly ministry, did a lot of miracles, signs, and wonders. And what did he do for the blind physically? He gave them sight. He didn't blind them. But Satan's more clever, more subtle against mankind. He's not going to blind the sight. He's going to blind the mind because he knows the body of Christ's doctrine is spiritual. He knows Christianity as a religion doesn't fully understand that. The, the religion of Christianity he's working on so hard wants to mix law and grace. If he blinds the minds of those that are a part of Christianity, the religion that he is influencing today, by a blinded mind, he won't have any problem bringing in the leaders that are blinded also to mix law and grace, to permeate down into your local church, your local pastor, your local denomination, and your Christian religion. And he's also telling people, you must be Christians. Because if you're a Christian and you associate yourself with the religion of Christianity, then I got you because the minds of your leaders have been blinded. So they will teach you that you're a Christian because there was Christians in the Bible that believed in Jesus Christ after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But they're blinded to the fact that these people were under the law. They were being taught by the 12 apostles and by Jews only to the Jews, the doctrine 
for the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, which was still under the law. It wasn't by grace yet. They were still under the works of the law. And they knew the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ only to the point that he was alive and he was going to come back and be their king. That's all they knew about the cross. Paul knew so much more about the cross. And Satan learned everything that Paul knew from Paul's teachings and what people were saying. So his only choice, his only avenue would be so subtle and so crafty to grab a hold of something called Christianity and make it into his false religion. Because why else would he do something like that? He can't go after the body of Christ because the body of Christ is out of the realm of any religion because Jesus Christ died for the religions of the world at the cross because religion was associated with the law, the Jews' religion. The man made it that way. God never intended it that way, but that's the way man did it. That's the crafty subtleness of Satan. He's not going to physically blind you because it's not a physical entity. To thwart you away from thinking it's a spiritual entity, he must blind your minds. And he takes you captive at his own will. You think I'm making that up? Let me show you something in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. Go to 2 Timothy in your Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25 says this, In meekness, instructing them that oppose themselves, that God preadventure would give them to repentancing, to know, to the acknowledging of the truth. Verse 26, here it is. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, for he who are taken captive by him at his will. Don't attack the physicality of it. Attack the spirituality of it. Why do you think God gave us spiritual armor? Why do you think we're doing a warfare, a spiritual warfare on Satan? Because Satan's very clever. But Satan is clever only to those that don't believe or only to those that associate themselves with a religion called Christianity. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, there's no way in this whatever in the name of anything that's decent will you ever have this taught to you or shown to you from the Word of God by your local church, your local denomination, and your religion called Christianity. Because what would it make Christianity out to be? A satanic, dynamic religion. Oh my goodness. What would that do to the number of people attending church these days in the world? The truth be known. I don't care what it does to me. I don't care what you call me. I don't care what you think of me. It isn't about me. It's about you getting the truth from God's word. And look at what was presented in this video as how clever and subtle Satan is that he came in under the realm of the religion of today that is the most successful, the largest and accepted religion in the world today. And you didn't have a clue. He's using the religion called Christianity today just like he used the religion called of the Jews in their day, blinding the minds of the leaders. And it trickles down. It blinds the minds of the leaders. It blinds the minds of those that develop Christian schools, Christian universities, Christian seminaries, Christian Bible schools that people go to to get their fancy doctor degree so they can teach and preach Christianity according to the word of God. They're thinking, see? They have no clue that their minds are blinded because they will not only take the gospel of Jesus Christ and they'll use that for their salvation, but they will also use everything out of the gospel of the kingdom. They will combine it. And that is the end result of the influence of Christianity as a man-made religion. That brings everything else into fruition. That is crescendo of everything here. And Satan's work will and is very successful. Why do you think Paul warned us? He said in the perilous times, people will fall from the faith. Well, what faith is he talking about? He's not talking about Christianity, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no. 
He's talking about the faith that's in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, the doctrine for the body of Christ, in the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in today. That is what he's talking about. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there's very few of us left that fully believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. But there's those that will still fall away. And they're going to believe what? Doctrines of devils. That's what scripture says. Look it up in Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 1. First Timothy. What is the doctrine of demons and devils today? You find them in the religion of Christianity. Because Christianity is expanding tremendously. They're talking about all these revivals. And there is going to be a lot of revivals in the religion of Christianity that aren't going to line up with the Word of God because in the Word of God, in the perilous times, the latter days that we're here now, Paul says there's not going to be those. Not towards the body of Christ doctrine. Not towards the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ. In the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in, that gospel, that belief by faith and faith alone is deteriorating very fast because Satan brought all this other stuff in. He's bringing into the Christianity miracle signs and wonders, just like it was on Jesus Christ's earthly ministry in the gospel of the kingdom that the Jews required in their religion, miracles, signs, and wonders. And you see it in churches all over the place. It is increasing, and so are the gatherings of people and the gathering to experience Jesus Christ in a physical sense and a spiritual sense, of course. They have to throw that in there, but they're looking for the physical experience. Something Satan has working on day and night. See how subtle Satan is? Did you have any clue Satan is using the exact same formula he used to get Jesus Christ crucified, he's using the very exact same strategy today not to crucify Jesus Christ, but to lead you into hell and the lake of fire by following something called Christianity. Look at Christianity, ladies and gentlemen. I keep teaching this and telling this. It's not in the word of God. Look at the word Christian. Where does Christian belong? It belongs in the God, the Word of God, in the Gospel of the Kingdom. It is the Christian Jews and Christian Jews only. There is no Christians in the body of Christ doctrine. They can't be. The body of Christ doctrine, the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, the Gospel of Jesus Christ is separate from any religion. That's why Satan can't touch it. He can't bring in a religion to destroy the body of Christ because the body of Christ is not a religion. But he can bring in Christianity, a man-made religion, promoting itself to be part of the doctrine of the body of Christ, promoting themselves to be Christians today, born again, and members of the body of Christ. But they mix law and they combine law and grace because Satan is behind it. So subtle. Most people, the majority of the Christians out here in this world, the billions of them, have no clue. They don't care. They all follow man to their death. And I'm talking about the second death here, not the first death. That's how subtle Satan is. You'll never have this taught in your local church. I challenge anybody that views this video. Have you heard this ever before anywhere? Have you looked at Christianity from God's perspective? And how about Satan's perspective? That's the only thing he has left. Now, here's a little tidbit for you before we finish. You're going to end up in hell in the lake of fire because you followed Satan and you believed man in your Christianity religion. You know, Satan's never going to spend a, one second in hell. Can't find that in scripture. I know he's going to be in a bottomless pit, whatever that is, for a thousand years. But he's going to get out. And where's he going to end up? He's going to end up in the lake of fire. But he's going to have you in hell first to experience that before you get into the lake of fire. That's what's waiting for you that follow Satan. You say, well, I don't follow Satan. I'm not a satanic, dynamic cult that I'm in. What are you in? You're in a false religion. What does that make it? You're in a very ritualistic religion. What does that make it? Be careful, ladies and gentlemen. The religion of Christianity 
in its falseness, in its ritualistic, and who's behind it is as much, if not the biggest cult in this entire world. How can you be free from this? Believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus Christ said it's his will that you be saved and come on to the knowledge of the truth. And Paul says, consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things that Jesus Christ of the root of David, <coughs> excuse me, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. And God tells you how to study the word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth. Why do you think somebody like me that is dumb as a box of rocks, has no theological training, never read his Bible before I was saved, can see all this? Not because of me, it's because of the teaching of Jesus Christ. It's the teaching of God, and I believe the word of God, and he shows me all things, and I have an understanding in all things, not because of me. It has nothing to do with me. It's all because of Jesus Christ. And if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, and believe what it is he says, he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that which was preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. You believe on that by faith and faith alone. You leave religion out of that. You do it by faith and faith alone. It is by grace, through faith, that you're saved. A gift of God, not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. Satan can't touch the body of Christ's doctrine. Did you know that? He can't touch the body of Christ's church. But he doesn't want you to know that. But he's got Christianity totally bamboozled and fooled beyond a shadow of a doubt. The subtleness, the craftiness Ah, the craftiness of Satan is beyond the comprehension of the finite mind and finite wisdom of man. The only way you're going to see it and understand it is let the mind of God teach you. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. Try that on, because that's the way it'll be for eternity. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you listening. Home Bible study, from my home to your home. This is Robert Holler thanking you. And once again, always remember, until next time.